this incentivizing clients to pay more for Adobe? How are you seeing generative AI really bring about a revenue increase for the business? Great to be here, Caroline. Um, you know, I, I think we have to put everything we're doing with generative AI in the context of what we've been doing over the last year. We first introduced generative AI uh, a year ago, and in that period of time, we've uh, added an imaging model, a vector model, which is another very important format for uh, a creative professionals, a design model. We've enabled customization of that content for their specific design needs or their assets that they, they work on. And we've exposed that in uh, Photoshop and our Creative Cloud applications. We've exposed it in Adobe Express for marketers and creative uh, professionals and solopreneurs. Um, and we've exposed it as APIs for a broad base of uh, automation workflows. And what this has really done is it's supercharged content creation. If you're a creative pro, you can produce that content much more effectively and much more quickly. Um, if you're trying to automate workflows, you can do that with your existing environments that you have. And if you're a marketer, you can react more quickly to anything that's happening on social. So it's really empowered businesses to operate at, at another level of scale. I want to talk about scale and the difficulty ultimately of feeding data into foundational models at the moment. You've just been unveiling sort of the new foundational model and I'm interested in what's going in because what set you apart, particularly in the narrative of Adobe, is that you're safer because you are building basically upon your own data, your own, well, images that you own, your stock. But then there was some reporting from Bloomberg, ultimately that you're having to use synthetic data, which is sometimes used from rival AI, well, image generators. Can you just tell us about how clients are responding to really what your data is being trained on right now? Yeah, we, we are, I think, without a doubt, the most responsible training uh, model in the, in the market. We've been very clear that we have uh, full license rights for everything that we've uh, trained on. We have a process that we internally call ART, which is about accountability, responsibility, and transparency. So everything we generate and, and any model before it ships goes through this process. We have a uh, um, uh, basically a moderation system in place so that we make sure any content that comes in does not have or is not encumbered with any uh, any uh, misappropriated uh, IP rights. Uh, and so customers have been very, very clear with us is that there's a lot of interesting work going on uh, around the industry, around uh, AI models. But when it comes to true production systems, we're really at the top of the, the, the marks in terms of the ability to actually use this to create and ship content that's generated with these models. David, there is only one single question that's being directed at Adobe right now, which is when and in what form will you have a text to video generation platform akin to Sora? Yeah, I don't know if uh, you had a chance to see the announcements we made last week at our the National uh, American Broadcasters uh, video uh, uh, series. Uh, we announced uh, and we talked about how we are, we actually gave a sneak of our text to video uh, capabilities as part of that. We also announced uh, that we're working with Sora, that we're working with uh, uh, Runway and with Pika. And together, uh, all of these capabilities are going to be embedded in all of our creative applications. Uh, what's really exciting about all this text to video capability is that we have the ability now to look at this and say, all of this generative uh, capabilities is analogous to more cameras in the world. And the more content that gets created, the more content comes into our systems for editing. We've also been just as clear our technology for video uh, the architecture and the research that's gone into it is very similar to what you see out of Sora and others, uh, and that we, we expect to have our model in market uh, later this year. The strategy in Premiere, and when I was at journalism school, I trained on Premiere, so it's interesting full circle. You are going to use third-party models, and so far Photoshop has not had the extension of that strategy. Just explain why and what you'll do going forward. We, we are going to embrace all models. Uh, you know, Photoshop, you will see, again, later this year, you will see support for any model that can be integrated into Photoshop will be integ integrated into Photoshop. But we also recognize that each model has its own personality. And at any given moment, what you generate in one model versus another model, there might be, be varying pre preferences. The one thing that we know is that uh, Firefly is going to be you know, uh, synonymous with the best quality of content. Uh, with the best detail of content and, and with the most control 
uh, controllability of that content that's generated in, in particular. And that means that what, whatever we create with Firefly can get more deeply embedded in uh, our tools. As Caroline mentioned, we just had an enormous set of announcements in terms of dozens of new uh, capabilities of AI generation embedded in our tools and workflows. And it's because of the way we build Firefly. But we are embracing third-party models and we anticipate and expect to integrate those in our tools as well.